This segment is sponsored by the American Heart Association. Of course, February is National Heart Month, and this year the American Heart Association's theme is Reclaim Your Rhythm. It's better to have it and not need it than to be in a position where you might need it and not know what to do. We're talking about knowing how to perform hands-only CPR. It's a skill that can save a life. Here to show us the proper techniques, Harold Mayfield with the Richmond Ambulance Authority. Harold, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we had folks in pre-pandemic and we went through the whole thing. And the only thing I remember is uh, 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 staying alive, staying alive, which I'm guessing by now you have a new tune, but I don't know. Good morning, Harold. Good morning. How y'all doing? We're great. Doing really well. This is one of the questions that we had, Harold, as I was thinking about this. You're going to show us the technique for hands-only CPR. This must be something that a lot of folks in these days and times with the pandemic and COVID, if you knew CPR before, you might be nervous in that moment of action. So can we take go through the steps of hands-only? Absolutely. So first of all, to answer your question, the song we're using now is Baby Shark because that's oh, at the baby front. shark. Yeah, I like that much better. <laughs> that stays in your ear for a little bit longer, right? <laughs> so the biggest thing that we found is with uh, CPR is like you were saying, people were a little more hesitant to actually perform it because of the mouth to mouth or the breathing aspect. So they've decided just to take that completely out. So what we do is we find a patient who is unresponsive and not breathing. We're just gonna immediately just go into chest compressions. When we do these chest compressions, we want to make sure that we're going two inches down or, you know, enough that you're compressing the sternum against the heart. And then you're going to let your hand rise to do the recoil to make sure, you know, it's perfusing back to where it needs to be. So the first thing you do is check the patient. Are they breathing? Are they responding? They're not. So then immediately you can call 911 because with hands only CPR, you're constantly just doing compressions, which is going to be a workout. So you're going to want help to come as soon as possible. So once you do that, you find the sternum, which is going to be dead center of the chest. You're going to put the bridge of your hand right there on it. You're going to interlock your fingers together, and then you're going to bend at the waist to do the compressions. You're going to do this between 100 and 120 times a minute. And like I said, that was too like the song of Baby Shark. You could do Staying Alive, like you were talking, or Star Wars fans, Imperial Death March also works as well. <laughs> Depending on your genre of yeah. music. Yeah, and, and you know, Harold, the thing, uh, one of the things I do remember is that this is not going to be over in, a, in like five or 10 or 15 seconds. Like you said, you might want to have somebody there to kind of relieve you after a while because you need to do this for a while, correct? This is correct. So, I mean, most places it's going to take at least five to 10 minutes for, for help to arrive from the initial call to when they get on scene. So this is a workout for 10 minutes and it's a strong workout. It's not easy. Um, so this is why we say to bend at the waist because you're exerting less energy that way. If you've been at the waist, you're actually just using your body weight to come down on the patient themselves. That will help this. And the other thing that people need to understand with this is 80% of the time, Someone's gonna to go to cardiac arrest outside of the hospital. All right, so this is happening. It could be your friend, it could be your loved one, it could be somebody you know. It doesn't, I mean, so this is, it's imperative for people to go out and learn this. And, and Harold, when we're in that moment of action, when it's go time, if you're surrounded by another group of people, uh, probably another step to this is make sure that you've instructed someone to call 911. Put that responsibility somewhere else and then you go into action and that that part that you're hitting is actually the kind of the bone part right you're not going below it you're trying to hit right there to push the the chest sternum down correct you, you go right on top of the sternum and you stay there you don't release your hands off at all you stay in contact the whole time and you're absolutely correct about pointing somebody out make sure if you're in a crowd you point one person out don't just say hey somebody go get help someone go get the aed point that one person out because if i say it out to a crowd you know, they're going to look around each other and feel like, oh, well, somebody else is going when nobody's going at all. If you point one person out, they're like, oh, I have to go. Um, so I would definitely point that one person out. That's right. Hey, you blazer, hey. you make 911. Yeah. And yeah. then, Harold, are, should you be looking to at designating somebody to be the backup? Green shirt, I'm going to need you in three minutes when I get tired to take over. I mean, you know, what should we be doing there? I just try to think of like these steps to fall into when it's go time. So a couple of things that I always teach is one is when you can call 911 yourself because everyone has a cell phone these days. 
So you call 911, you put on speakerphone, and you place it beside the patient. This will give you your coach in the corner from the communication center that you're talking to. They'll keep you, make sure you're at the right speed, and, um, and they'll talk you through this, to, you know, give you that little extra help. But yeah, absolutely. If you have more people there, say, hey, look, in two minutes, I'm tapping out. I need you to come in and help so I can take a little bit of rest. And then uh, five minutes later, I'll jump back in. That kind of thing. Absolutely. If you have that help. If not, it's going to be just, you know, you having to just muster through it. That's right. Harold, your friend there is cooperating completely. Uh, but if the person's head is tilted to one side, turned to one side, or uh, is there a proper position for that to, to be in, or is, does it matter? It doesn't matter. Um, it, I can even, well, his head doesn't move. Yeah, he's, he's pretty stiff. Um, but yeah, their head can go to the side and stuff. That, that's not gonna matter because this is not gonna cause enough force that's gonna cause any harm to the neck area. Okay. So that would be perfectly fine. Yeah. And, and obviously our main priority is make sure that we get you know, this part started before we worry about anything else. Two additional questions for you, Harold. One, uh, this stunt double is full size. If you're working on a child, if you find yourself in the need of, of uh, hands-only CPR for a child, same steps? So same steps for children. The only difference is gonna be if they're a smaller child, you're just gonna use one hand instead of two. So you would just go one hand over across the uh, round top of that sternum. And if it's uh, an infant, you're gonna use two thumb methods. So uh, you're gonna put your hands along the sides of their body and then use your thumbs to push down. And with the children and infant, you wanna go at least down, at least a third of the way down. Wow. Is, how, uh, is the depth of the compression. Excellent. Thank you, Harold. Great uh, refresher course there. And now we're gonna do Baby Shark. Thank you, sir. Y'all have a great day. Make sure everybody goes online and uh, gets, gets in class. You, you bet, absolutely, and happy Heart Month to you. For more information on this topic through the American Heart Association, visit heart.org slash CPR, and you can find more on social media, American Heart VA. We hope you'll stay with us because there's a lot more Virginia this morning coming up after a quick break.